Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about a huge storm system with an intense jet stream bringing Arctic air, high winds, and severe weather over the next seven days. Welcome back everyone. I appreciate all the new followers out there and you sharing my channel. I would love to hit 100,000 by the end of the year. So I greatly appreciate it. We got a lot of active weather to come over the next seven days with a lot of moving parts. So definitely share this information out there so they can stay weather aware and stay ahead of the storm. So let's break this down to, for you for th this morning. We got some cold air to talk about. It's 24 below zero in Calgary. That cold air is finally on the move. It's down to 19 in Seattle where they had that snow yesterday. You, but you can see the cold air starting to filter into Los Angeles at 45. And But we got snow showers well to the north here. But man, we still got plenty of warmth to deal with over the next coming days well down to the south. And unfortunately, that's going to set the stage for not just one, but two rounds of severe weather over the next seven days. So let's break this down as far as the hazard map goes this morning. And it's a lot of colors on the map. We've got a lot of snow still flying out in our western areas. That's where the cold air is now. And they're going to be adding to those totals where they just had a lot of snow over the last several days. That same system continues pushing across this morning where I showed you the snow. And on the back side, they've got blizzard warnings because we got high winds and that Arctic air is pushing down from Canada into the Dakotas this morning with those blizzard warnings in place for parts of the Dakotas and going into Minnesota. And then we also have some winter weather advisories in parts of uh, PA and New York, as well as you know, Massachusetts and Connecticut here. And all this down here, that's your dense fog advisories. That is the soup kitchen where you're waking up to, you know, basically record high low temperatures down here. It's very unusually warm for this time of year. We need that Arctic air to kind of clear the air mass out. And we're going to get that. But unfortunately, unfortunately, it's going to come with the price and form with the severe weather before we clear these things out at the, you know, in a week, a week time frame from now. Well, let's go over some of the snowfall totals for the last 72 hours. And some of these are just very impressive i mean yeah granted this is on top of a mountain mammoth lake up here but 126 inches in three days i don't care if i'm out or not that's a lot of snow <laughs> i mean so yeah you can see the relentless amount of moisture they had to work with you know off the west coast here with all these totals here here's the snowfall legend not just in the uh, higher elevations but along the coast i mean a lot of these areas hadn't seen snow in a while and you got it yesterday and you're still going to continue to get it as these continue to move across. But yeah, these are some impressive totals over the last three days. And you're gonna be adding to those totals in the days to come. But also that's with that cold air pushing south, the snow pushes south as well. So let's take a look at the map this morning for Monday, December the 27th. And we're, we've got a lot of snow to work with into parts of Oregon still and in Nevada, into uh, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming. That same system will continue to push it off in the Dakotas. Uh, not, not nearly as impressive as snow amounts up here in these, these regions because you don't really have the Arctic air to work with as of yet. Uh, but down to the south, there's kind of the warm front with all that warm air just pushing in for that south wind. You got fog advisories. It's just nasty. It's just warm. I mean, it's not even remotely feeling like December in these neck of the woods. But welcome rains continue for portions of California, and that pushes into uh, Phoenix with more more rain for for you. But yeah, look at the snow line just wants to stop once it gets to Denver. I mean, it hits the foothills and it doesn't want to go to Denver. And unfortunately, that's the case uh, today. So, but as we move into tomorrow, uh, there's the snow out west still. That's still going to fly. We still got that atmospheric river continue to pummel through. We got still cold cold shots coming down. Uh, there's the warm front. There's kind of the boundary, right? This is the boundary. This is a separation from colder air and warmer air. To the south, you got all that warm, soupy, gulf-type air. Uh, and then to the north, you got some of that Arctic air trying to slowly shift down. And it will take its slow time, but by the end of the week, it's going to be on the move, and it's going to finally uh, clear things out in, in, after the first of the year, though. So, 
let's take a look at the overall setup for the 29th so this is our first severe weather setup that we're going to be dealing with and it's got a uh, it's got a low pressure system forming off the west coast here and you can see this powerful jet street comes across in the midsection of the country bringing some high winds in its path but unfortunately we've got that severe weather we're going to be dealing with for portions of the southeast as it taps into this warm gulf moisture here with these higher dew points and that's going to set the stage for a round of severe weather coming up on the 29th here. And it looks to be a setup on to the nighttime hours again, unfortunately. So areas in and around essentially from Louisiana to Arkansas to uh, going into Tennessee here, as well as Mississippi and Alabama, even parts of Georgia still could see some severe weather with this system but the main impacts are going to be in and around the mississippi area going into the alabama area mainly from uh, essentially from the birmingham alabama area those areas will be under the gun to see some of those strong thunderstorms and looks like all three modes of severe weather and unfortunately could be looking at more tornadoes breaking out in this region uh by the time we get into wednesday time frame so let's take a look at the overall tornado parameter index here as far as the probabilities and unfortunately this keeps going up i mean yesterday we were seeing levels at 70 then it approached 80 now we got an 85 percent probability of seeing maybe a particular you know tornado in this neck of the woods i mean this atmosphere is going to be rotating unfortunately it looks like a nighttime event so we're talking possibly nighttime you know nocturnal tornadoes uh in its past so definitely if you live in this region you need to be on high alert and have your NOAA weather radio handy into the overnight hours uh before you go to sleep uh because things could get, get could could get pretty nasty and into the nighttime hours and you need to have your plan in place to get to a safe zone and i looks to it looks to be i'm going to be doing some live coverage on this particular event as as it gets closer uh so definitely be on the lookout for that so let's take a look at the overall integrated vapor transport and so you can actually see this ridge of high pressure this is a dominating ridge right and you got that warm soupy gulf moisture air you got the wrap around here off the west west side you've got this strong low pressure system coming off the west coast tap it into that warm gulf moisture and then tap it into that some of those higher dew points and that spells trouble over portions of the southeast as we go into the nighttime hours on that 29th into the overnight hours on that 30th uh time frame but let's take a look at the overall minimum temperatures by the time we get into 30th December the 30th towards the end of the year and that Arctic air is finally on the move it's in it's in uh, portions of Canada this morning but now by the time we get in that Thursday time frame it's sinking south and all these areas in purple are is below zero and these aren't feels like these are actual temperatures of 27 below zero up here in Montana but you can see the cold air on the move and where that separation is we got teens and and nebraska and to kansas that cold air continues to funnel down in the 20s now in missouri there's the warm sector down to the south widespread 60s uh you're you're going to be dealing with even on the back side so it really doesn't clear out right it does not really clear out because this cold front really doesn't go any far it just kind of stops right here and because you don't clear out, you're still going to be susceptible for our next event because the same dynamics are still going to be in place as we have yet another system that's going to be continued to move across. So by the time we get into that 30th time frame, there's the overall surface map, what we're looking at. It kind of clears things out, right? We have that system moving offshore. It goes up here. We've got some sporadic showers still left over into uh, the portions of the southeast going into the mid-Atlantic. Uh, but for the most part this pressure system will be moving out and then we'll be we'll be looking at our next particular system that's going to be forming down here off the west coast with more cold air draining from the north and we've got more snow 
flying uh, in its wake, but this is what I'm really kind of deeply concerned about because the models have been really consistent. We've been talking about this actually for several days on this channel, and this is the close low. This is a nasty storm, guys, and we got all those dynamics still in place and man it's dragging down that arctic air you can actually see where the cold air would be by the time we get into that 31st time frame right to the north of here right so right to the north of here we got that southern branch and this close low with this very powerful jet stream coming across and this is going to bring some intense winds in its path in fact once it hits the mountains of colorado I mean, we could be looking at some of the higher elevations of over 100 mile per hour winds is definitely not out of the question. Some of these maxing out to 125 uh, almost in some of these areas into basically, you know, west of Fort Collins, west of Boulder here. So, yeah, these winds are going to be really whipping and packing a punch with these tight pressure gradients and isobars really kind of tightening it up. And you can see the dynamics, what we're going to be working with as we get towards the end of the year and the first day of New Year. So here's the setup as we go into New Year's Eve, right? We got this powerful low pressure system off the coast, really trying to get its act together. There's the red, the red line, that's your freezing line. That's the Arctic air to the north. We've got the warm sector to the south. We've got all this dynamic, intense energy moving across but you can see where the these little tight isobars right that's indicative of some very high winds and it's wake with this powerful low level jet that's going to be coming across and look at the dew points it's going to be tapping into in this atmosphere widespread 60s for portions of the south and the southeast even 70s and 74s in the gulf of mexico that is some nasty stuff by any month much less December and the end of December and going to the first day of January. This is almost unheard of to see some of these dew points so high for this time of the year. But you can see where these negatives are, right? That's Arctic air. Arctic air is the driest air. So once we get these Arctic air in, then that kind of clears that clears the runway a little bit. And you may hopefully will put it into this active pattern because we've been looking these, these systems one after another. You know, as it taps into that warm gulp moisture, that's why we had those two severe setups and it looks that we have another one and then with another one. So we could be looking at four particular setups over, uh, you know, three or four to, three or four week time frame, really end of the month of the December going into the first day or two of January. Because look where the close low is by the time we get into New, New Year's Day night. That is a very powerful low pressure system, really taking shape with a powerful jet stream coming across with these winds are going to be whipping moving across so yeah that sea same areas could be under the gun to see another threat for severe weather but on the north side we got snow right we got the cold air we got the moisture in place we could be looking at some lighter snow maybe breaking out into portions of the texas panhandle portions of oklahoma portions of kansas here getting into portions of Missouri. And then you got all that warm sector on the south side. That's where you're going to be seeing the severe threat, uh, basically trying to set up in more or less East Texas and moving into the southeast. And in fact, the Storm Prediction Center, even six days out, I mean, even six days out, we've been looking at this for the last several days. So things have been really trying to come together. And now they have enough confidence that this may come to fruition by the time we get into that January 1st for New Year's Day, going into that second time frame, and a lot of the same areas, this system may be a little bit further north. But yeah, see these areas from uh, essentially Shreveport to Jackson to Greenville to Little Rock to uh, over to uh, west parts of uh, Tennessee here, get, even and get into Kentucky. And I do feel as we get closer, because we're still six days out, right? This is just kind of going to expand into... Uh, you know, potentially a dangerous situation. So we'll be fine tuning this particular system, but man, a lot of the dynamics are coming together that it looks pretty nasty guys. And I wanted to give you plenty of advanced warning uh, with this particular system because we were looking at a lot of nasty dynamics coming across with this powerful jet stream with a lot of updrafts with it. And that spells trouble. So that's going to be just some nasty stuff 
uh, coming by the time we get into that first and second time frame. But there's the cold air. I mean, we need the cold air to kind of clear the engine, right? I mean, we we can't keep the, let this keep happening. Finally, the cold air reaches the coast, and hopefully, that might be enough to hopefully kind of clear the things out. And and after this, after this, the severe threat, but out ahead of it, we got some snow to talk about. And it's got the cold snow bringing in on the backside, going into portions of Ohio, getting into PA, going into New York here, into uh, Vermont, New Hampshire. We'll have to really kind of fine tune this as it kind of gets closer, because you can see there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of dynamics with this system, even over the next seven days, with a lot of big changes and in, in the weather in the days to come. But man, look at some of the feels like. This is not actual temperatures. This is what it would feel like to the body. We're not talking 60s, what you're experiencing this morning in much of Texas and much of the Southeast. We're talking single digits, particularly, what it feels like to the body. That's that's some strong Arctic air. And 40 below zero up here it feels like in the Dakotas and Minnesota and going into Wisconsin. So that is some true Arctic air that we really haven't seen so far this winter right but that cold air continues to drain out ahead of it we got the warm sector and then behind it uh, we got the cold air so by the time we get in that third time frame this should be enough to kind of clear things out as you can see it rapidly clears out on the backside with the arctic air right arctic air is the driest air and it really clears out and it lowers the dew points hopefully enough man man look at the dew points going down and the going down in the teens all the way to the florida panhandle and the 40s into the gulf of mexico so that is a good sign we really need and all that soup just goes back into the caribbean and kind of clears even the runway even into miami with 50s dew points so hopefully hopefully um this would be enough to kind of end the overall cycle that we've been in for the last three, four, five weeks with these particular systems. And really, it kind of dates back until October, technically, from these nasty systems. So, uh, but between now and then, we got a lot of snow to talk about. And here's kind of the blend. I separated, instead of saying the European and the GFS, this kind of gives you a blend for this day's, this this far out over the next seven days. So it kind of wipes out some of the individual model runs, but kind of gives you maybe a more of a realistic viewpoint even this far out because there's a lot of moving parts with this system but yeah heavier snow is more confident out here in the western regions with some lighter snow particularly might be breaking out in the texas panhandle portions of oklahoma portions of kansas and getting into missouri here with more confidence of that heavier snow band moving further to the north and places like chicago but more getting into minnesota wisconsin and to michigan with some heavier snows into PA and the upstate New York and getting into Vermont, New Hampshire, going into Maine with some of the heavier snows. Now, granted, this snow line could sick a little bit further south, but I wanted to give you kind of a blend this morning, maybe more of a realistic view this far out uh, of maybe some totals we might be looking at in the days to come with this very dynamic system coming across. So I appreciate you guys watching. Do share this video with social media to get it out there to let people know of all the big changes ahead. I'll be doing daily updates and kind of fine tuning everything. I appreciate you watching. Definitely hit the subscribe button if you hadn't already. And catch me on the next update where I protect you before and after the storm.